As we learn more about how COVID-19 spreads from person to person, one question that comes up is often, how close is too close? Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with some new research that's putting a COVID twist on the old saying that it's not what you say, but how you say it, Doc. Yeah, you know, with multiple reports now of transmission of the SARS-CoV-2 virus indoors from infectious aerosol, the question has shifted from whether it can occur to what the risk is from ordinary activities like speaking or even breathing. Now a new paper is describing ordinary speech as the source of jet-like airflow. In a paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, fluid dynamics engineers at Princeton University using high-speed cameras and lasers studied the way in which ordinary breathing and different types of speech create jets of airflow capable of spreading exhaled aerosols from a person's mouth. In the first video, you can see that even calm breathing with a slightly open mouth produces a significant jet of air. Active blowing, as you would do during an athletic activity, propels the airstream forward with even more speed and distance. When it came to ordinary speech, the researchers found that what you are saying mattered when it came to how far the jets of air we breathe out go. When the subject spoke the phrase, sing a song of six pence, it's not until they say the word pence with its P sound that the airflow moved in a forward direction at a higher speed. During other parts of the phrase, the airstream was directed in the downward direction. Phrases with multiple P sounds, like Peter Piper picked a peck being said aloud here, create multiple jets of air that are more similar to breathing or blowing, pushing air directly forward at a higher speed for a greater distance. Now in their study, the aerosols produced during speech typically reached the six foot mark after about 30 seconds, and they were diluted to 3% of their original concentration. Now the researchers concluded that if a listener is directly in the path of a speaker for a conversation longer than 30 seconds, they should consider either moving back or to the side to reduce their exposure. This is really interesting, Dr. McGeorge. So what about singing or speaking loudly, say in a bar or uh, I don't know, at an athletic game or something. What do they say about that? Well, you know, they didn't study the change with increasing loudness of speech, but you could certainly expect that the speed and distance of spread would, of course, increase. Now, the other thing that they didn't look at was the effect of masks, and it is likely that they would have a significant impact on potential exposure yeah, as well. You could see that. Okay. Thanks, Dr. McGeorge.